keeping retro, because we like retro games, and we like the devices that bring them to us. So I have a new device to show you today, the Embernic RG405M. I ordered this on Amazon and got it in the same day. You have to love that Amazon Prime same day shipping. And so while I'm going to be doing an in-depth review on this device in a future video, I kind of wanted to get my feet wet because the stock Android firmware that does come with this device is kind of lacking in my opinion. And so thanks to the Gamma Squeeze, we have an operating system called Gamma OS, which removes a ton of the bloat and gives you a nice, clean operating system. And so this video will be a setup guide to go through the process of installing Gamma OS on your Ambernic RG405M, and we'll get you from zero to hero and then I'll also go over a couple of recommendations as far as Android apps that you're going to want to have on this device. Quick disclaimer, this is not for the faint of heart and I was only able to accomplish this due to the help from the kind souls in the Retro Handhelds Discord. So with that, let's dive in and let's get to work. Alright, to start you're going to need a Windows PC, so let's go ahead and start there. And we're going to navigate to the Gamma Squeezes GitHub page. And there's a couple of different versions that you could download. I'm actually going to download the light version here because I plan on a build that does not need the Google Play Store or to be signed into a Google account but you can download the Play Store version if you plan on running Android games. So no matter which version you pick, you will be redirected to a Google Drive site where you can download the Gamma OS files. And there's a bunch of instructions. We're gonna go to brand new install where you're going to find a video from my friend, the Retro Tech Dad. But you're also going to find a written guide with some other downloads and so there's some stuff that we need to download to our computer here. We're going to start with ADB and Fastboot++. And so if you go to the releases tab of this GitHub page, you're going to find two different versions. You're going to find a portable version and an EXE file. I'm going to download the portable version and you're going to see why a little bit later in the video. In my personal experience going through this process, I found that the portable version was just easier to use than the actual install. And while our files are downloading, let's go ahead and do some prep work on the device itself. We're going to go into the settings and about section, and then we're going to go down to build number and we're going to tap that multiple times until it says we are a developer. This will open up developer options. And then from there, we're going to go into system, developer options, and then we're going to go ahead and turn on USB debugging. This will allow us to access the device from a USB to USB-C cable that we are going to connect to our computer. And then it's going to say USB debugging connected when we're done. Back on our Windows PC, we just need to make sure both the Gamma OS folder and the ADB and Fastboot++ folder are unzipped. So you can either extract the file right in Windows or you can use something like 7-zip. And so let's go into the Gamma OS folder and we're actually going to go into Unisoc drivers, Win10, and then we're going to click dp install 64.exe and then this will install the unisoc drivers necessary for us to work with the rg405m and so now that our drivers are installed let's go ahead and double click the toolkit.bat 
and run anyway if Windows Defender pops up. And what you're going to see is the toolkit is going to connect right to the 405M and it's going to give us a bunch of options. So the choice we're going to make is option 6 and then option 2 to reboot the system into the bootloader. And then it's going to go ahead and press any key to continue. I can't find the any key so I just kind of pressed tab because I wanted a tab. I didn't get a tab though, it just continued on. Simpsons jokes aside, we can go ahead and exit out and you're going to notice that your 405M is now in fast boot mode. And this is what your screen should look like before we move on to the next step. Now let's navigate to this website in the directions and clicking connect, clicking fast boot gadget and then clicking unlock is going to help us to actually unlock our bootloader. On the device itself, you will get a warning as well as a couple of options here. It will tell you to press volume up to cancel or to press volume down to confirm installing. However, I'm going to show you what happens if you press volume down. It's actually going to say user canceled. So what you really need to hit is the back button that I'm pointing at here. And that's going to actually unlock your bootloader. Don't make a mistake like me, actually read the directions. Now with our computer still connected, we're going to click opencmd.bat. And then from there, we're going to enter the command fastboot reboot fastboot. And what that is going to do is that's going to put us into fast boot D mode. And you're going to know you're successful when on your Windows PC, it will put up another command prompt. And on the device itself, you're going to see fast boot D in big red letters, as well as a couple of options that you can navigate with the volume up and down buttons but we're actually going to leave our device right on this screen plugged into our Windows PC and we're going to move on to the next step. This next part is important. What we actually want to do is in the Gamma OS folder, we want to take the erase user data, flash partitions, bat and flash partitions.sh and we want to actually move those to the same folder as the ADB and Fastboot++ programs that we have been utilizing thus far. We also want to take the Flash folder and we want to move that there as well. Now there are potentially other options that don't involve moving these files, but this is why I recommend using the portable mode because this was the only way that I actually got the firmware to flash properly. Then we can go ahead and we could double click the flash partitions.bat file and it's going to give about a 30 second wait time and then if everything works correctly it's going to go ahead and flash the firmware. You're not going to see anything on the device except that fast boot D but if you see that it's taking some time then that means that everything is working properly. You'll know you'll get errors if you see something like fastboot is not a recognized command or access is denied, but if you see what's on the screen here, you are installing the firmware. Once everything is done, we can go ahead and reboot our device, and you're going to be on this screen for quite a bit on first boot, but once it does the initial setup, then you will be greeted with this beautiful little loading screen here. And so that's your indication that you properly flash the firmware and you should boot into Digesha, which comes preloaded on this version of Android. A couple of other suggestions I would make is definitely download Firefox because it is a much better browser experience from what you get with the default browser and 
I'm also going to leave a link in the video description for the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus version of Dolphin for handheld, as well as some other MMJR and MMJ forks that you may find useful. However, I've been finding that in max performance mode with Dolphin for handheld, I can get Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door running at 50 frames per second with the PAL ROM and there's no graphical issues that I've seen with the Vulcan back end and it actually works pretty darn well. And so I'm going to leave you with that little taste of what the Ambernick RG405M can do, especially now that we are better optimized using the Gamma OS build of Android. And so I want to thank a couple of people from the Retro Handheld Discord for helping me with the install, specifically Fautemor for getting me the forks and builds of Dolphin so I can get my Paper Mario on, the Gamma Squeeze for not only making this build of Android, but also personally helping me when I posted a problem that I was having with the install in the Discord and Joey's Retro Handhelds and the Retro Tech Dad for already covering this device and already posting their own install tutorial videos. And I'll leave a link in the description to their 405M videos. Please go check them out as well. I'll also leave a link if you want to buy the Gamma Squeeze a coffee for his work on this device. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you considering an Ambernick RG405M? Are you planning on installing Gamma OS? Or have you already installed Gamma OS and has it improved your experience? And feel free to continue the conversation in the Retro Handheld and Steam Machine Discord. That's where you can find me hanging out in between videos. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if this was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.